What is happening, everyone? Welcome back to G-Ball Vision. Today, we are taking a first look at the Vosteed Knives Thornton. Before we get started, double check and make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I would love to have you here. And before you head out, hit that thumbs up button. I greatly appreciate it, everyone. So, we have the Vosteed Thornton here. This is a collaboration with the creator over at Wayne Sharp World and Vosteed. I believe this is his design produced by Vosteed. And I did have a full unboxing of this knife already ready to go, but Vosteed has since started a big sale on their website. And this knife is a part of that sale. So I figured I would go ahead and just redo the video and let you guys know that this is on sale. I will have the link that will take you to their sale page down in the description. You don't need any specific codes or anything like that. Click on the link, it'll take you to their sale page and there is several knives and other items. And there's also, I believe, you can combine things and get a discount and so on. So you'll have to go over there, check it out and you can see what all they have to offer. So, we have a satin finished 14C 28 inch sheep sweat blade. We have a nice little flat here, a little swedge here. I do like this. It's uh, a good size. It's a nice blade shape. From the sharpening choil all the way to the tip, you kind of have this gradual uh, incline to that tip. And, you know, as much as I like a straight edge, I do really like this as well. It's, it's almost very reminiscent of just an extremely low drop point, if you will. Uh, but it seems to work very well. A good utility style blade here. We do get multiple deployment options with the studs and the front flipper. The front flipper really reminds me of like a, a Ray Laconico designed front flipper. And that is a good thing because he executes or designs some of the best front flippers in the production knife world. So that is a good thing. The jimping is well done up here and it also works very well in the open position for a standard grip. And the you land right on top of that and the studs. So it's just a nice spot, comfortable spot to be in. Uh, back to the choil there. Uh, good sharpening choil. Is it the best in the world? No, but it'll it'll work uh, for a little while there. The uh, thumb studs work very, very good. Uh, they chamfer this out nicely on both sides, so they are very easy to get to. Thumb and reverse flick, very easy. Uh, you can do all the standard front flipper things with this guy. Reach around the the index rollover, if you will. And I believe they have a couple different versions of this. I got the black micarta here, which is definitely a personal favorite and preference of mine. I love 14C with a satin blade and I love micarta. So this is really right up my alley. I would have loved to seen a full length backspacer here, but eh, that's just a personal preference, of course. We do have some internal milling in there in those recessed liners. So this is a pretty lightweight knife. Uh, the only thing that I think should be changed on this knife is it's not told for a lefty carry. <clears throat> that could have easily been solved by just, you know, tooling this for a lefty and throwing a filler tab in there. Now I have to assume there's some reason or another uh, Wayne didn't want it that way, uh, Vastid didn't want it that way, or it was just kind of an afterthought. I'm not sure on that uh, as to why, but, you know, a button lock is a fairly ambidextrous style lock and knife, you know, especially when you got the dull thumb studs, you got the front flipper, uh, this knife would be very easy to actuate if you are a lefty. Now, I would say that's not a deal breaker, but I'm also not a lefty. So I could understand if, you know, you're left-handed uh, and you don't want this because there's no way to mount the pocket clip for left-hand carry. 
We do have a deeper carry here, a deep carry clip with a little bit poking out there. You will have a little tiny bit poking out. We can give a little preview of that here with our issuing stitches cloth. Little bit poking out, not bad at all. Standard Vostid clip. If you have any of their other knives, this is pretty much what you will get. I don't mind the clip at all. Uh, it's aesthetically fine. It's functionally fine. And, you know, typically in hand, I don't really feel that clip in a way that it's bothersome. Uh, particularly in this knife, it's very comfortable. Uh, even though this is a little bit, this is a, a mid-size, I would say. It's not small, uh, but it's definitely not a large folder. But this is a, a good size. This is going to be in a lot of people's wheelhouses for size. Uh, now, if you're not a Sheep's Foot fan, you know, then this is definitely not going to be for you. But, you know, if you have not experienced a Sheep's Foot, I would highly recommend getting one. They are some of the best at utility and functional knives, basically. Uh, uh, they are some of the best functional blades, in my opinion. A sheep's foot can do a lot of things very, very well. And if done properly, you know, you can do a lot of different things with this style of blade. You can still poke and pierce. You can still have nice long slices or nice long cuts. And you can have a ton of control over this blade because of the way this is designed. You can have good utility style cuts, draw cuts, things like that, uh, where this knife will really, really shine. My Carta Backspacer, everything is recessed. Everything is finished very well. We have very minimal hardware. We have one body screw here, and then we have a non-told pivot, which looks nice and clean. Then we have our told pivot, of course, our two pocket clip screws, and then another body screw, which they look like they run through the backspacer there. Uh, probably could have just went with a captured body screw here as well to keep it really clean uh you know a non-told screw here and just ran this side all the way through but that's just me thinking out loud uh ergonomically though standard grip very comfortable choked up because this is flat and softened here you can really get right up behind that edge in a hammer grip if you will uh the index style grip and cut going to be perfect for that especially the way this flares up to the tip there it's going to be brilliant for that type of cutting uh, as far as the button lock goes we have a barrel around that button and the springs are nice and strong the button is easy to get to but it does not stick out too far to the point where i've had some people over the years here or the last year and a half uh you know, ask me about, is it an issue pushing that button in when you have this in hand? Uh, you know, have I ever, you know, deactivated it, if you will, you know, while I'm using it? And I have to be honest with you guys, I have handled and had over probably at this point, guys, 50 plus button locks. Now, have I used them all, you know, extremely hard or used them all to their full extent? No, but I have used a few dozen of them very hard, very heavily, and very often. And I have not once ever had an issue where I hit that button and accidentally disengaged that blade. Uh, I, I just, it doesn't happen. I, I don't know if that's because I'm aware that the button's there, but if you look here in a standard grip, I'm not touching that button. So my thumb's going to be up here. The rest of my fingers are down here. As far as like an index, you're not even close to that button. Uh, you know, unless you, you have to really, I don't know, you, you would have to deliberately almost be pushing that button. Um, even if you're in a thumb over grip and you're in a really strong hammer grip, <clears throat> my thumb wraps over my fist, so I'm still not touching that button. Even if I am choked up, I'm still away from that button there. 
Um, you, you're almost, you would almost have to deliberately be, I don't know. I, I just don't see it, guys. And and I'm not, and that's what this particular one, there are other button locks where the button sticks out a little further. Uh, there's a little bit more area there that you can get to it. But like I said, I have not once had an issue where I'm accidentally disengaging that blade. If you're buying a button lock and you're using a button lock, you have to be extra uh, cautious with that knife. Not only because it is a plunge lock, but because of that button. So there's, you have to be very mindful when you're using a button lock knife. They're not the strongest knife in the world. Now this, I think, must be their Trek lock. It's not a standard plunge lock. At least that's the way it appears. Uh, I believe this is their Trek lock. But even with that being said, um, you know, a button lock is not going to be the strongest locking system, right? We all know that. If you don't know that, now you do. Uh, can they be strong? You know, can they hold up? Yes, they can. And lately, uh, Vostid has been doing a phenomenal job with their button locks. Kaiser, uh, Savivi, you know, they've been doing a very good job. Vostid in particular, their button locks and crossbar locks have been very, very good. Uh, and this one also falls in line with being very, very good. Uh, I have flipped this one around a little bit. I think it needs just a touch of... Yeah, that's better. But... Uh, I just, just for people who are wondering, you're not, you, you're going to be mindful that this is a button lock, right? You're not going to be ha trying to hack a tree down with this. Uh, you're not going to be getting into stuff that is extremely dense and, you know, trying to use the two hand grip, you know, and, and getting into stuff like that. This is going to be for breaking down boxes, opening up boxes, clamshell packaging, you know, uh, cutting rope, twine, straps, things like that. You're not going to be hard using something like this. But in your standard, you know, in the few standard grips that I can really think of, you're not going to be on that button. So, you know, and if you're new to button locks, it's something to be mindful of. But as you train yourself, you know, you just, you know that it's a button lock. You know that it's there. You know that you have to be mindful of it. So it's just something you start to work around. Um, you just get used to it. You get used to dealing with it. And it's just the nature of a new locking system or just a different locking system. Uh, and, and we could go on and on for a while about knives that are that have new locking systems, new opening methods, whatever it might be. There is a learning curve there, especially when you're new to it. Nobody starts out, gets their first front flipper and nail, you know, and and they just get it. You know, it's something you got to practice at. It's something you got to get used to. Hell, I know guys who have been in the knife game for a long time and still can't nail a front flipper. So uh, there's definitely a learning curve to some of this stuff and button locks is definitely one of them. But just uh, a little food for thought there. You're not going to have an issue, guys. Uh, at least you shouldn't. Uh, and this is solid otherwise, guys. It came with a nice edge. The lock is solid. All that stuff was tested. Uh, I just, I'm not doing it again because I just don't feel like it. But uh, solid knife, solid design. Uh, I, I really do like this one. It's a casual EDC knife. Uh, I think Wayne did a good job on this design and Vosti did a good job on the build. So I will link this down below in the description and you can head over there, check out this knife, check out the other versions, check out what else they have to offer in that sale. And that'll wrap this one up, guys. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and let me know down in the comment section what you think of this knife. Let me know what you think of Vastid. Let me know what you're carrying. Let me know what knives you're looking forward to. I look forward to hearing from you guys each and every video. Love y'all, and I will catch you on the next one.